Hi everyone, it's Mike again. Welcome to Creative Suite TV. This week we're going to be doing some retouching and we're going to do this. This is the before and this is the after. It's going to take a little bit longer than my usual episode, but all of the techniques you can develop and do your own retouching and do it really quickly. So it may not be the best job in the world, but you will certainly be able to use these techniques to retouch all of your images. Hope you enjoyed this episode of Creative Suite TV. Let's get into it. Okay, this is going to be a wicked retouching demo. You're going to get a lot out of it if you pay attention. First thing, everything is going to be non-destructive. Everything that we do, and we've already started the background layer over here, you'll see is a smart object. And in that smart object is a, guess what's in there? Camera raw file. So we double click this. This will take us back out into the camera raw where we can make adjustments. We don't need to do that just yet. Uh, we're going to do everything on layers. Everything's going to be adjustable. Uh, it's going to be fun and easy. You're going to learn a lot. Step one, do that. Step two, duplicate that background layer um, because we're going to tackle some of the larger problem areas, maybe the bags under these eyes here first, some of the larger problems, and then we're going to get down and do some really fine uh, retouching in a minute. So we've duplicated that. Uh, we need to flatten that down or rasterize that particular layer. Just right click on it so we can do that. And we're just going to rename that layer because we could end up uh, with a number of things here. We're going to call that one bags. And then we're going to zoom in with the new scrubby zoom. Uh, pan over. We're going to tackle this area here uh, first. The tool that we're going to use, and you could use the content aware fill, but it's not going to do a fantastic job. The tool of choice here is going to be the patch tool. Uh, I really think that's the, the best way to go, the patch tool. Um, it, it's hiding usually underneath the spot healing brush tool. And what we do is we lasso around the area that we'd like to patch over, obviously. So we draw a lasso like so um, around the area. And you can add to that just with the shift key if you, if you get a little bit of a funny area like that. You could do it, subtract away from it with the alt key like that. If you want to subtract little areas away, you can certainly do that. I might just subtract that corner off there. A little bit more. There you go. Got the patch. Two modes here. You've got source and destination. We're going to leave it on source. And what we can do is pick it up and move it. It gives us instant feedback as to what we're going to be patching with. So you can make sure you get it in the right spot. Now, we're going to make sure that we follow this along as close to that as we possibly can. You can see there's like a uh, a shadow area at the, at the left there. So we're just going to make sure we try and line that up as best we can and let that go and then that can patch that in. Wow, that's a pretty good start. Then over here we can patch this side as well. We're just going to ignore those few uh, stray hairs there for the time being. We'll try and line those up as best we can. There we go and we'll patch that up as well. So already we can do a before and after. Before after and we've started getting into it. The next tool that we're going to use is the spot healing brush tool. Now, the spot healing brush tool is great for just removing out little bits like this. I can just go click and remove out any little imperfection. So we're now moving from the very large problem areas down to smaller ones. Even these creases here uh, we can just click shift click in between them so that we can patch those up. And of course, over here on the forehead, we can then just go and patch up a few of those bits and pieces. Now, right in really close, uh, getting a much smaller brush, we can start to fix up these little problem areas here under the eye. And I'm just going to click, shift click, and just patch these out as best we can. Again, we're going we're gonna to go over this a little bit more uh, finer detail later on, but I think this is a good start just to remove some of this nonsense out of there. And we're starting to, to get this looking a little bit better. <clears throat> just for the sake of the video, we're not going to do absolutely everything in this photo, um, just so that, you know, for the sake of time. But obviously, we could spend a little bit more time on this and do that nicely. So we've got before, after. Another technique that you can use if you, if you want to do this separately is perhaps you don't want to get rid of that stuff altogether. you can certainly do this with an opacity as well. So while you 
there's the all of the um, bags together you could drag this up and maybe just reduce them a little rather than completely get rid of them in this case we'll completely get rid of them the next thing that we're going to do is add a new blank layer uh, over here so I'm just going to go ahead and hold the alt key down uh, no rather I won't hold the alt key down I'll just click that new layer I'm going to go ahead and turn this into a color layer now the color layer is great for evening out the skin tone okay so what we're going to do is grab the eyedropper and we're going to sample a skin color so by clicking and holding it down we get this new skin sampling wheel so we can see that we're getting a nice skin tone there we go now that's loaded up as our foreground color and we're going to go ahead and select a brush now what we can do with that skin color as our foreground color is brush over this image so that we get the same skin tone throughout the whole image so if you've got some sort of ready areas or, or whatever you can then paint over them and then even out uh, the skin tone okay so you can see we've gone perhaps a little a little dark there but don't worry about that because we can certainly change this color a little bit uh, later on now you can be as um, harsh or as or as um, even um, as you like here I think we're just a little bit too neutral though as you can probably uh, make out so we're going to paint this over and then what we can actually do is lock the transparency okay so we lock the transparency uh, grab the eyedropper or we'll sample a new slightly warmer color I think from down here and then just alt uh, delete you can fill that if you lock the transparency okay so alt delete fill grab the uh, paintbrush uh, keep painting okay we've got a new color turn that lock transparency off and there we can get a nicer skin tone that's that's more warm or warmer rather and we can paint that over wherever we like to so right under the eyes there make sure that that skin tone is all the same so that looks good looks good looks good and we can even paint uh, a little bit down here as well so now we are getting into it warm that up that's better okay again we will just paint up here and we'll do a before and after before after yeah we've kind of evened out that skin tone one more before after yep I think we're looking pretty good so we've got the color right there uh, I think and that's looking pretty good now the next thing that we're going to do we're going to rush ahead and we're going to start smoothing this skin out it means we need to duplicate all of these layers together so I'm going to say uh, command option shift or control alt shift um, E will duplicate all of those layers into a merged copy that's a merged copy there so what we now are going to do is blur that layer okay so we've got the layer we're going to blur it we're not going to do any regular blur we're going to go there's a couple of different ways you could do this but we're going to go really uh, harsh I guess a, a really harsh one where we're going to go with a surface blur so filter blur surface blur now the surface blur is really going to blur out any fine detail and leave the edges around anything that is um, a very high contrast and you can change this so what we like to say um, when we're doing this just a general rule of thumb is um, grab the radius slider and drag that radius slider up to what you think the age of the model is well I think about 33 there only joking you you just drag it up until you've smoothed out all of the detail that you want to get rid of um, and the threshold if I bring that back to two is what gets blurred and what doesn't get blurred so the higher this goes the more detail gets blurred the lower it is the least amount of detail gets blurred. so you're only blurring out the very very fine uh, detail and then obviously you can drag this up and down I'm going to leave that at about 30 and I'll leave this at about 14 don't do it on 13 it's bad luck it's okay obviously it looks like rubbish at the moment but we've certainly got the skin kind of looking okay what we want to do is combine this with the original detail underneath and we're going to do it by way of painting so we're going to add a reversed layer mask to this layer and we do that by holding down the alter the option key 
and clicking on the add layer mask button gives us a completely black layer which means if we paint on that layer with white I'll switch over to white we're going to be revealing that blurred or that smooth skin so I'll get a bigger brush and I can then paint it on wherever I like to smaller brush to get it in around those edges and you can say I can paint out and what a lot of people refer to as, as airbrushing um, that skin so we can paint that out and we can do this in a number of different ways, uh, a number of different blurring techniques. So we can just soften around those eyes there, particularly where we did that retouching. We can do that and soften that out. And then there you go. Now, I am being very heavy handed about this, as you as you may appreciate for this video. Um, you could quite easily uh, change the opacity of your paintbrush as you did this. So you could make it uh, the effect a little less dramatic. Um, I can even sort of smooth out the lips here a little bit if I wanted to do that. Paint over there, uh, round that edge, it's going to keep that edge for me. Uh, slightly bigger brush again, and we can remove all of that very fine detail there. So, we can, because it's on a layer, we can also drop the opacity after we've painted it all, so we can do that. A um, lot of different options, a lot of different uh, flexibility that we can have with it. Um, so that's cool. Let's turn off the background layers and see what we've done. Okay, that's a bit scary, but what we have done is created essentially uh, a little mask and we can paint in these areas like that, turn the background on and make sure that we're getting this looking, looking right. So we have got this looking pretty good so far so we're blurring that out that looks good couple of last things we're going to create in one more new layer and I'm going to hold down the alt key the option key this time give a new layer and this time we're going to put it in overlay mode I'm going to fill it with overlay neutral gray okay so overlay neutral gray means it's going to do nothing to the layer but whatever we paint on it with black will darken the picture. Whatever we paint on with white will lighten the picture. And we're just going to add a few little highlights to the eyes. They're a little bit dark. So I'm going to make a smaller brush, uh, reduce the opacity of that brush, and then just go ahead and paint in the eyes just a little bit, just to brighten them up. Now, if you do this too much, it's going to look weird and psychotic. So you don't want to, you don't want that. But we can just brighten those up a little bit. And then we can do just a little bit more on the darkening side just to make them pop. Again, smaller brush, and we can just draw in a little bit around here, like so, and a little bit over that edge, and a little bit over that edge. And we'll do a before, after, before, after. Make those eyes pop a little bit more. That's looking pretty cool. So now we can do before after okay so we're getting there one last thing just to add a, a really soft glow to the whole picture we're going to do one more layer command option shift e duplicate the whole lot and this time we're going to do a blur but we're going to do a pretty standard blur a gaussian blur okay so 14.4 um, that sounds all right um, maybe a little bit more maybe we we'll do 17 press okay now Okay, obviously the thing's completely blurred. We're going to come over here now to the overlay mode, but we're going to choose soft light this time. So soft light's going to give the whole thing a lot more contrast, uh, a lot more vibrance, and then really make this image pop. So we do before, after, and if that's a little bit too much for you, what we can do is double click this layer and say, okay, let's bring some of the detail back in the shadows there. So we can say, take the this layer slider and make those dark pixels transparent so we're just working the highlight area so you can see how we're bringing back that and to make it a smooth transition hold down the alt or the option key and split this little guy in half and you can blend those two images together so we blend them together like that and now we've got a pretty cool looking image so we can turn off all of those layers and we'll zoom in a little bit so you can have a good look. Um, so there we go. That's before and after. So there we go. 
we can do that really easily. Hopefully you enjoyed that really quick um, five or ten minute however long retouching technique and you can reproduce that on just about any image. Don't forget you can follow me on Twitter nowadays at CS underscore TV. Thanks for tuning in to Creative Suite TV.